Hey guys, Emma Thompson here. Welcome to my channel today. In this video, I want to talk to you guys about how to deal with your partner lying to you about their past. This is something that unfortunately happens quite a bit with retroactive jealousy sufferers. And I'm going to first go over what to do if your partner knows that you have retroactive jealousy or your partner knows that their past bothers you and so they lie to you. And this is horrible for a retroactive jealousy sufferer. It really, really is horrible. It breaks trust. It's not right. But we also need to look at the partner in the situation and remember. So imagine if you were with someone that had retroactive jealousy, right? You can't talk about your past because it triggers them. You know that if you tell them the truth when they ask you, you can only talk about it when they ask you. Um, and if you tell the truth, you get, you know, a lot of the time shamed and blamed or they shut down or they go in a mood or that's it for like a day or a week. If you lie and they find out, then you're in serious trouble because now you've broken their trust now there's so much more that they don't, you know, then you spiral as an RJ sufferer. What else have you lied about? Um, I can't trust you. Everything's a lie. I just want to leave the relationship. So as the person that is with the RJ sufferer, we have to remember that it is very tough a lot of the time. There are RJ sufferers that don't do this. There are RJ sufferers that don't shame and blame their partner um, and try their best to not make their partner feel uncomfortable or unaccepted about their past but it's something important to remember that it's not easy as and i'm not justifying lying of course i've been through it it's horrible um but what i would recommend in this case scenario is first of all for you as an rj sufferer to start looking at why you're experiencing this read up on it do your research maybe try therapy maybe try reading a book or two on it um, and while you're healing I would recommend telling your partner when I ask you questions about the past just don't answer them or even better if you want to take control as the RJ sufferer just don't ask questions don't ask questions because you're feeding retroactive jealousy you're making it stronger and it's not serving anybody Something that helps a lot of people is if you make a calendar, a 21 day calendar, um, and each day that you don't ask questions, you tick a box. So basically what you're doing is you're trying to get, you're trying to tick 21 boxes. So every, so, and this helps because if say, for example, you've gone three days without asking a question, um, you get to day four, you have a really tough day, you really want to ask a question, because you've already gone three days and you can see on your calendar I've ticked three days I don't want to mess up on the fourth day you're more likely you have a reason or why to not do it if you know what I mean so if your partner's lied about their past definitely work on the rich act of jealousy and work on rebuilding trust in their relationship but also remember it's not easy being with someone that has retroactive jealousy it's not easy at all. And again, you don't have many options. You either lie and then you're a liar and you're not to be trusted. Not that lying is okay, of course. But then if you tell the truth, you are shamed, you are blamed, your partner gets angry with you, they go in a mood, they shut down. And, you know, you're kind of trapped. So the best way to go about this is just... Either you, as an RJ sufferer, don't ask questions or tell your partner, don't answer my questions about the past. I don't, for a little bit at least while I'm healing, I don't want to know anything. It's not going to be like this forever. After a few months of working on yourself and healing, you um, will get to a place where you're able to, you know, if the past is, if the past is brought up, you don't feel threatened or you don't feel as threatened. Um, but this is this is a very big problem and it comes up very often because the RJ sufferer's partner the RJ sufferer's partner 
Yes, the Azure Sephiroth partner doesn't know what to do. And again, lying is not okay, but it's important to remember that the more that you are able to overcome RJ, and the more that you don't feel threatened or bothered by your partner's past, the more they're going to be able to open up to you and feel like they don't have to hide anything. And so they'll be more open and more truthful with you. But it's human nature, guys. If you make someone feel like, you know, crap about themselves, if you make them feel ashamed and, you know, bad about themselves, they're not going to want to open up to you. They're not going to want to share things with you. They're going to lie to you. They're going to want to hide. Because, you know, we're only human. I'm sure that your partner maybe has regrets about their past or maybe they're not proud of, of everything that they did or maybe they just, they just don't want to think about their past and you bringing it up all the time, you know, obviously is affecting your partner. You suffer a lot as an RJ, suff as an RJ sufferer, but you also, you know, can cause your partner to suffer an awful lot as well. So that is what I would recommend if you are with someone that has lied to you because of your RJ. There is the second case scenario where maybe your partner lies to you about their past and they don't even know that you have retroactive jealousy. So it's tricky to determine whether or not, you know, and I can't tell you if your partner is a liar or not, or if you should stay with them or not, but um, if your partner has lied to you about their past and you haven't given them a reason to have to lie to you, then maybe that is something to look at. Maybe it is time to break up. It's not okay to, obviously it's not okay to lie and it doesn't really help the relationship because, you know, trust and love and connection and vulnerability and being able to feel that you can be open with the other person is what builds great relationships. And if the other person is lying about their past or lying about themselves in any way, shape or form, it really depends on the person. Like, do they want to tell you why they're lying? Do they want to work on themselves? Are they ashamed of their past? Do they have past traumas? Have they been through sexual assault? Is that why they don't want to open up? Are they willing to work on themselves so they can be with you? All of these things really come into play. I don't like it when people say, oh, you know, if they've done it, if they've, if they've done this, then that means you should break up with them. If they've done that, then that means that, you know, then you should stay with them. It's not like that. You need to be the, the, the person that makes the decisions about who you want to be with and who you don't want to be with. And again, it all starts from within. Are you in a place where you were able to look at the situation objectively and figure out what you need to do in your relationship if your partner's lying to you? Or are you in a situation where you can't look at the situation objectively because you are so wrapped up, so wrapped up in your own anxieties, insecurities, fears, and past traumas? So lastly, guys, what I wanna say is that there is never a guarantee in anyone's relationship about whether or not you are with the right person, about whether or not your partner is never gonna lie to you ever again. No one has that guarantee. You can't have that guarantee. But you need to look at yourself. You need to look at what you have control over and you need to start making some decisions. Do I want to take the risk and be with this person and you know give them my trust? Do I want to work on this? Do I want to work on myself? Do I wanna work on this with them? Do I feel that we can get somewhere together? Do I see myself with this person long term? Am I allowing my own insecurities and fears and past traumas get in the way of my judgment for this person? Is my decisions Are my decisions based on love and confidence within myself and stability and, and feeling calm and peace of mind? Or is it based on my fears and my insecurities? So all of these things are good questions to ask yourself. Remember, again, there is no guarantee for anybody. Do you want to take the risk and trust? Do you want to put that, you know, do you want to be vulnerable with that person? Do you want to take the risk and see how it goes, basically? Because that's what everyone's doing. No one has a guarantee about anything. And you need to remember that. 
and you need to get to a point where you feel comfortable with not having a guarantee and with feeling like okay this is the person that i want to be with right now i'm going to put my trust in them i feel confident you know right now doing so i can't control the future i don't know what's going to happen in the future i don't have any guarantees because again no one does so guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that it made sense to you. If you've got any further questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.